All right, welcome everyone. Uh, so today, Andre will be the chairman. So please. Okay. So um, today we are very happy to have Gwenel from Ecole Normale in Paris. Uh, he's a PhD student in Paris, and uh, he will uh, open a new chapter for us and talking about the uh, fishnet model. Uh, please, Gwenel. Yes, um, thank you. Yeah, of course. First, I start. I would like to start by thanking uh, the organizer for inviting me. And uh, so, indeed, I'm a PhD student of uh, Verdia and Dizina in, in Paris. Uh, okay, so today, I will be mostly presenting uh, what we did with Benjamin, Verdia, and Deliang in this work. And so, I will talk a little bit about non compact spin associated with Fishnet CFT. So I will start uh, with a brief uh, summary of uh, definition of the fishnet uh, homomorphy theory. Then I will explain how to uh, determine the mirror scattering data that one needs to formulate the TBA for this theory. Okay, I will then uh, present the TBA actually for ground state operators and also its dual version. And in the last part, I will be uh, more interested in uh, the graph building operators that would have appeared before and the relation to integrable mm -hmm. spin chains. Okay. So the, the fishnet CFT was uh, initially obtained as a, a double scaling limit of gamma deformed n equals four super angles. So it was in four dimension and uh, four dimension and then it was generalized to any dimension. So the, in four dimensions, it was obtained by uh, Gerdoan and Kazakov, and the generalization was by uh, Kazakov and Libuchi. So the, the Lagrangian uh, density for this theory is uh, very simple. You have only two uh, matrix complex scalar fields, X and Z. Uh, so they, they are both matrices of size uh, NC by NC, and we consider the theory uh, in the planar limit. And so it goes to infinity. Uh, so it's deep. It's defined in dimension D, which would take to be larger than two. And there is only one um, interaction term for this theory, which is non-Hermitian. So it's a quartic term like this one. And because uh, you have matrices, uh, I mean, the fields do not commute. And the uh, Hermitian conjugate of this term is different than this term. And it's not present in the Lagrangian. So the theory is non-unitary. And okay, and we have only one uh, coupling constant, uh, psi square. And with another parameter, delta, um, uh, delta, which is which measures the anisotropy of uh, the theory. So you can see it appears in the uh, kinetic terms for the, the different uh, scalars. And uh, okay, so the, the only condition is that the, the sum of delta and delta t should be d over two. But then the consequence is that uh, the propagators for Z fields and propagators for X fields don't have the same, uh, same weight. For X, they will have weight delta, and for Z, they will have weight, uh, I mean, exponent delta T. So because of the restriction on the interaction vertex, of the interaction vertex, um, you cannot draw many Feynman diagrams for the theory, and uh, the only Feynman diagrams you can draw, actually, they are fishnet type. They, they look like, uh, pieces of a square lattice. Well, a square lattice in which, say, the horizontal, propag horizontal propagators have a different weight than the vertical. Uh, okay, so it's also an integrable theory. So this, uh, for the fishnet graphs, it was noticed uh, 40 years ago by Zamolochikov because he studied them as a statistical physics problem. And uh, it could show that there was integrability. It's related to um, to the U so SO1 commodity plus one is the conformal group in Euclidean space in D dimension. Um, okay, so you can build a non compact spin chains with this symmetry group. And the iterability comes from here, but I will be explaining that uh, in more details uh, in the last part of the talk. So, yes, these three authors they, they, they constructed this non compact spin chain, and in this paper it was, it was realized that. Uh, Integrability for the, for the theory actually agrees with what had been constructed before. 
OK, and finally, this theory is conformal. And um, so technically, you have to be more precise. You have to add the uh, counter terms to make it conformal. But uh, because I will be considering uh, operators of length, uh, say, three or more, uh, the content terms, they will have no impact on the two-point functions and the final limit. So uh, I'm not uh, going to bother. And then making the circle around the branch that contains the code. And after doing so, I get this expression. And if you try to project this. Sorry, can, uh, yeah. Thanks, Paula. Okay, so, so we will, I will, what we did was to propose the TBA equations for the scaling dimensions of operators of uh, well, these forms, so single traces and a uh, certain number of X fields, certain number of Z fields. So I will consider uh, the Z fields to be the, the, the background, uh, the background, background, and the X fields uh, will be excitations on above this, uh, this background. So. Uh, yes, yeah, so for instance, uh, this type of graphs is the graph that would appear that appears in the mixing matrix for this operator. Yes, because of course there is mixing as soon as you have uh, more than 2x uh, and 2z, well, uh, you can rearrange them, and because they do not commute, uh, there is mixing between different sort of operators. That's why, technically, to have an operator with a definite scaling dimension, you have to add some linear combination um, of these different traces. Commuting. Permitting the fields. Okay, and these graphs, they represent uh, the typical um, uh, element of the mixing matrix. So in this kind of drawing, the black line will be the, the Z propagators and the red lines will be the X propagators. Um, okay, so each uh, vertex, each uh, person here is, uh, is associated with an integration point and uh, each line between two Vertex is a propagator. So I could ask, uh, do you allow for derivatives? Uh, no, no, no. We don't have a derivative. Uh, can I ask this question about previous slide about uh, these parameters? Um, uh, yeah, delta, delta tilde. So I recognize it as a dimension of a complementary series, yes, of conformal group. Yes, but yes, exactly. Yeah, but on the level of, of this, um, diagrams what what is special about this uh, choice so if you choose different um, deltas uh, you will lose conformality you will lose conformal symmetry or, or what will happen so uh, you need at least that uh, delta and delta tilde are uh, like the sum to d over two to have a conformality is there anything you need and then uh, for the integrals uh, well the, the weight the, the exponents of the propagators they are delta and delta tilde, so you see that if you go close to zero, well, one of the propagators disappear, but the other goes close to d over two, so it's a delta function. Okay, but, uh, okay, sum should be d over two, but uh, why, but from- Well, the, that's just uh, dimension counting of the Lagrangian, so what dimension yeah. of x field, of z field, and then uh, you have to require the size dimension, so just, uh, as simple as that. Yeah. Why uh, delta should belong okay, to you can uh, oh, from the diagrammatic point? Ah, you can take a, you can give an imaginary part to delta. Probably. Ah, I can, yes. Probably, but... Um, okay. But oh, then, you're not in the, then you're not in the complementary series uh, anymore. And uh, also, yes, why would you <laughs> want to do that? Yeah, yeah. It's my question just why is there is this restriction? So from representation theory, yes, I know that it is special things which corresponds to dimensions of complementary series, but from the level of di diagrams, so you say that it is important to have the sum of delta and delta tilde equal to d over 2. Yes, and also the real part uh, should be between 0 and d over 2. Ah, real part. Well, at, least, at least the real part should be smaller than d over 2. Otherwise, there would be a divergence as soon as the two, two points go close to one another. Ah, oh, okay, they were. Uh, but in the practice, uh, your result will be uh, some analytic function of delta. It will it yes. be a branch, branch cut at the over two or a pole? There will be only poles. Uh, yeah, so then it's not uh, really very restrictive. Right? Okay, so um, yes, and uh, 
just wanted to say that uh, okay, to formulate the TBA, we need a, a dispersion relation, these energies and momenta of the particles, of the mirror, yeah, of the particles in the mirror theory and uh, the scattering rate. So it turns out that if we want this data, we only need to consider uh, the graph, the wheel graphs, that is the graphs that appear in the, in the two point function of the ground state. So what, they look like this, okay. and uh, the only graphs you can draw are when you add a certain number of uh, circles to this diagram. Um, Okay, so then the, the mirror picture, it emerges when you imagine that this uh, virtual, uh, particle, the virtual X uh, particles, they live on the black propagators, on the Z uh, propagators. So it's a one, it's a one dimensional system because uh, after RD, one, dimensional uh, space in which they live, and then the sphere, it will just be some, it will give rise, sorry, to some uh, internal uh, degrees of freedom. It will be a, an internal uh, OD uh, symmetry. But the mirror position is just the log of the, of the radius. Mm -hmm. And, um, okay, and then how do they, what is the evolution, how do, yeah, how do they evolve at this, uh, this the system of, um, of uh, mirror particles, well, it's under the action of this graph building. This operator because you can see that applying it repeatedly, you build uh, the whole graph, right? If you apply here it uh, six times. And, and you get the whole thing. Um, okay, yes, it is exactly what I was saying. So this uh, mirror particles, they evolve to the action of uh, gamma hat uh, n, which will be our graph, so n is the number of, of particles. It acts on, um, well, on wave functions, phi, and uh, its kernels is just a sort of a comb. All the horizontal lines have weight of a uh, yeah, exponent uh, delta, in this, and uh, all the vertical lines, they have exponent uh, delta tilde, is in this one. Okay, yes, and we are actually in the complementary series of the, of the conformal group, so the, the, the inner product is not just, a L, it's not a L2 space, uh, the space in which they live, uh, the function, you have, a, you have this uh, perhaps, uh, surprising uh, scalar inner product uh, in which uh, you take uh, phi and psi at two different points and then you join them with the uh, propagators. Uh, okay, just a comment that it's perhaps not clear that it is positive definite, but if they have a Fourier transform, then in, uh, in Fourier space, uh, it's indeed um, like L2 with a, with a weight. But why X not at zero? Oh, why not? I mean, I will take X not to be zero. It can be anything, but I will choose it to be zero. So which way you build your graph? Just uh, what is n? n is the number of uh, scalars, z? No, no, no. Uh, n is the number of uh, circles. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. So if we want uh, the dispersion relation for this uh, mirror particles, we only need to consider uh, gamma hat uh, one which is the simplest of these operators. And um, so it acts on function only of only one variable. And because it commutes with uh, you know, rotations and dilations, uh, its eigenvectors are, I mean, you don't have a choice. They have to be of this form, like a power of the, of the radius. Remember that exponential sigma is the, is the radius. So here, the, the real part of this exponent um, is fixed by the, the fact that you want the orthonormality with respect to the inner product I showed before. But the imaginary part, it can be any uh, real number, can be u or two u. Um, so it's a parameter for these eigenvectors, the, the rapidity. And uh, then also these eigenvectors, they will depend on an integer L, 
that we interpret as the, the type of, uh, of the mirror particles. Like uh, for each integer, we will have uh, some, yeah, a different type of uh, mirror particle. Okay, and finally, there is a, uh, a degeneracy in the spectrum that appears be because you have a freedom of, uh, with a symmetric trace phase tensor. So. Uh, so this is just a, a spherical harmonic. Okay, C is symmetric trace lace, and it's just the internal uh, because of freedom. Okay, so from this, it's uh, the analog of a plane wave for our system. So you, you see you have uh, exactly e to the IP times the position, sigma. So it's natural to identify to you as the, as the momentum. And then the energy will be given by the eigenvalue under the, the graph building operator gamma hat one. Sorry, so, could I see the, the previous previous slide? Just yes. A bit confused. So n is a number of circles, right? Yes, yes. In, so here uh, n is uh, three. Yeah, n is three, but j mm -hmm. is uh, six. Yeah, the number of z fields is. Uh, Number of right, and uh, then you pick the origin, and uh, can you see the next slide? Yes, yeah, sorry, here I should have said this This is not integrated over, it's fixed. It's the position of the, the, the operator. Yes, sorry. that's your x naught, right? Yes, yeah. And then uh, what is this external uh, propagator? So, sorry? Uh, the external propagator, so there was one line going outside. You mean this? On the previous picture, if you look. Uh, this? So, so do you have a leg going outside or, or not? No, 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 here are, so there you, is nothing, it stops. It's just uh, the, the wheels. And is it integrated towards this uh, last point? Yes. So then uh, what, what is this object? Yeah, yeah, it's not the, <laughs> it's it not the, just the diagram. The divergent part is the divergent part. It's not of this diagram that we care. But here, of course, this diagram doesn't, uh, it's not uh, finite, it's not uh, well defined. But um, say if you don't integrate over, say, uh, the three points here, uh, it's, it's finite. So you can, uh, so you can compute uh, all the other integration points except those. But my question uh, is, one. so imagine you, you compute all those diagrams and uh, sum them together. What type of object do you get? Because if you want a correlation function with uh, a local operator, then you won't integrate over external point. Uh, yes, so if you want the, the correlation function, you, you have to regularize. I mean, uh, you have to introduce uh, some cutoff uh, and uh, and look at the divergent part and then uh, renormalize. No? So this would be two point function uh, where yeah. one operator is at zero and another is infinity. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. so that's what we consider, right? That's what okay. we have. We have sent, uh, so the other one is at infinity, yes, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. mm, yes, so, um, yeah, the eigenvalue is related to the energy of uh, this, um, of this particle. So, yeah, the ener energy is, is epsilon. And here is the expression. So yes, indeed, it's uh, uh, meromorphic in uh, delta, uh, in delta. Uh, OK, so perhaps just a particular case of this expression is if you look at the one, the fishnet theory coming from n equals 4 superior means. So you, you, you work in four dimensions and with isotropic uh, fishnet. Uh, epsilon is just uh, this simple expression log of u square plus uh, l plus one square. Over five. Okay, now we still need the, the scattering matrix to, to have all the data we require. And for this, we need at least uh, the wave function for two, two magnums. That is the eigenvector. No, yep. sorry, just, just understand the logic. So you, you said, okay, this particular graph can be built as a like six power of this graph building operator, yep. which now you can diagonalize, right? Yeah. So yes. you know it's eigenvectors, you know it's eigenvalues. Why can't you stop here? 
if you if you diagonalize your graph building operator, you should be already happy. Uh, because uh, you, so first of all, I, I diagonalized the gamma one, so I have only uh, one wheel. Then uh, here, I'm, for instance, I'm showing uh, the eigenvectors for uh, gamma two. Ah, it was one wheel. Okay. Yes, it was one wheel. And then um, even then, you have to uh, you have to regularize the graph, right? You have to introduce a cutoff, and then if you introduce a cutoff, uh, the work you have done on gamma. Um, I mean, what? How did it's hard, very hard. I, I thought we regularize uh, the eigenvectors, but I mean, it's not so easy once you have to regularize something to, to make it finite and extract the diversion part. Um, okay, so the okay, so now the, the eigenvectors of gamma hat two they are already much more complicated. Uh, I have no uh, no intuition to give on, on their form, but uh, that's what you obtain. And um, so okay, this is the, the graphical representation of this eigenvector that I have written explicitly here. So first of all, it depends on the characteristic of two um, two particles, so two rapidities and two. I mean, Particle of type L1, particle of type L2, and then some tensor structure. That's again internal structure. Okay, so C now is a, a tensor of rank L1 plus L2 that is a separately symmetric trace trace in the first L1 indices and in the last L2. Um, okay, then uh, you have to. There are still two integrations in this, even in this, the expression for this eigenvector that you cannot uh, perform. I mean, okay, you could perform the one over XB, but the expression would be even more cumbersome. And anyway, the one over XA is not uh, well known. Okay. Mm. okay, so you see that the, the rapidity. So rapidities u1 and u2, they do not appear uh, on the same propagators, right? U2 only appears on this propagator, and u1 uh, on this uh, on this side. Okay, and you have to take derivatives with respect to this point, x0, x0 prime, and at the end, you, you put them to, to zero, or actually to the position of this operator from before, but I chose it to be zero. Okay, so from this, uh, uh, this yes. integral, so the star triangle or not? Uh, no, it, so star triangle doesn't work here. Yeah. But uh, because at the end of, after taking derivatives, you put x naught and x naught prime to zero, uh, you see it will be just a chain, or similar to a chain. It's just that uh, once you take the derivatives, you have many, many, many terms. So, this object is function of x0, x0 prime, x1, x2, it is conformal so, object. So this function, yes, the eigenvector uh, is just a function of x1, x2. Okay, so it is, it is a four-point correlation function, actually, yes? Uh, okay, yes. <laughs> Sorry, you split x naught and x naught prime for regularization, or what? Uh, why did you split them? Oh, uh, you have to do it. You have to take the derivatives. Uh, you have to split ah, the, them before okay. taking the derivatives, and at the end you put them. It's just. Uh, so what are the c? C. Oh, c is a tensor. You contract the derivatives with a, some tensor structure. Is it fixed uh, or, or not? Or? Uh, no, and actually you can choose any c. It will be okay. an eigenvector. There is degeneracy in the spectrum. Okay. It's the uh, it's the sphere because of it. Okay. So because it's integrable, the eigen the energy of these two particular state is just the sum of the individual energies. So the eigenvalue is explained is a product of the eigenvalues, and um, and the S matrix, you will uh, obtain it once you look at the asymptotic behavior of this eigenvector. So you, you send uh, the, two, the two particles far away from one another, and you look at uh, the asymptotic behavior of the eigenvector. 
So this you can compute actually. Well, in some cases you can compute. Uh, and this is what you would get. Um, so there is an overall factor that can depend on x1, x2, but uh, it's an overall factor, so uh, it doesn't matter for uh, the S matrix. And then you have a sum of two terms. Uh, the first one is, you see, it's like the, the, the momenta are associated with the, I mean, P1 is associated with the position of the first particle, and P2 is the position of the second particle. And the second term, you, you switch uh, the momenta. Right? P2 is x sigma 1, P1 is x sigma 2. And then there is a, a matrix that explicitly acts on the tensor uh, structure, the internal structure of the, the particles. And this we were able to compute it, as I was saying, in some cases. And it, I mean, we conjecture that it is of this form with first there is a, a scalar phase that involves two functions f and s which have a complicated expression. I mean, there are also ratios of products of gamma functions, like the, the eigenvalue. So I'm not showing them here. Okay. Uh, and, and then there is a matrix structure because C uh, lives, in, I mean, it's, uh, lives in the vector space, in some vector space. And uh, there is a, a matrix structure, the S matrix, that is, um, with, we conjecture the, the OD invariant R matrix. So we were able to, to, to verify this, this claim in some, um, first of all, when both spins, when both L1 and L2 are one, uh, it's not too tedious. You can perform the computation exactly and uh, you recover uh, indeed R11 and uh, the correct, I mean, what we want in the scalar phase. And then you can also uh, consider C to be completely symmetric traceless. That is symmetric traceless in L1 plus L2 indices. In that case, it will be an eigenvector of R with eigenvalue one. So, um, so here, this will be just the scalar phase times C. And uh, in that case, we can also uh, verify uh, this, uh, this claim. So just to Term you scatter only symmetric traceless representations, right? Yes, only so, symmetric. Yeah. So is it like speciality of your construction? Once there are no other representation for the Hyperion. Oh, because um, you know L2 of the sphere you can decompose in spherical harmonics, and spherical harmonics there are only uh, symmetric traceless representations of uh, of okay. uh, the rotation. Okay. Uh, good and uh, your norm, by the way, it was uh, it was an Euclidean, right? Signature. I mean, scalar yes, product. Yes, sorry. Ah, yes, yes, I am working on Euclidean signature. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So sorry. So now we have uh, the dispersion relation and the, the S matrix, so we can formulate uh, the TBA. So. Uh, the, the, the scaling dimension of the of the operator of the ground state operator it's contained in, in the the divergent part of the, the, the graph that appear in the two point function. Mm. So, uh, the, those Sorry, Gunnel. Yes. Sorry, sorry. I had the question on the previous slide. Uh, oh, yes. Our matrix. Uh, so, do you have proof uh, of these R matrix for any L one and L two or? No, no, no. Uh, because. No, I don't have proof. We don't have proof for any L1, L2. Uh, mostly because it's a complicated. I mean, uh, I don't even know the. I don't even know a manageable expression for this R matrix. Like, uh, Compact. How would yeah. I to verify yeah. that I have the correct one? Uh, I don't know what to compare it with, even if I manage to compute something. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. It's possible in some way because you can obtain this matrix starting from SU2 by some. Uh, Passage from uh, uh, in any dimension you say spinners. we can obtain. Ah uh, no, in any di in any dimension, uh, then sp spinners uh, yes create a problem, but maybe it's possible still. But yeah, uh, because I I I I know that you did it in a four dimension. No, but it's not the same matrix, because I mean in our paper it's not uh, we have uh, SU two R matrix. We don't have a homological. Of course, the two are related. Well, you have the O four R matrix, right? You have like a SU two times SU two, no? 
Uh, yeah, okay, no, we obtain, we obtain SU2, our matrix, which okay. uh, can be fused to any order of the two. Okay, okay, okay. Two. And then uh, it is possible actually to show that from two copies of SU2, you recover the homologic of it in O4. Okay, okay. That, okay. But, so I wanted to know if, uh, because I remember in your paper was a conjecture, that of the model. Yeah, well, it's still uh, it's still a conjecture. Still. We only have R11 and uh, the scalar phase, but uh, we don't. The matrix structure we haven't been able to to check in okay in full generality. So you should should be able to do fusion for the logic of S matrix and then get it. It has a fusion point. Uh, yes, but. Uh... Okay, yeah, uh, perhaps. Uh, um, okay, yes, yeah, so I was saying the diversion part of the uh, wave function renormalization would be something like that. So, of course, everything here is infinite, right? This is infinite, this is infinite, this is always infinite. And, um, but uh, it looks like this. So. Use n is the number of particles or the number of uh, red circles. Uh, J is always the same, right? It's the number of uh, z fields of spokes in this uh, in these graphs. And uh, you have to sum over all the, the different uh, graphs. Uh, of course, there is the, the coupling constant that appears because each time you have more and more uh, integration vertices. So you see that um, th this looks like the well, this is the uh, the, the partition function when you have sent the, the size of the system to infinity. So size square, uh, I mean log size square appears to be a chemical potential. And uh, yeah, gamma hat n is to be exponential minus uh, the, the energy. So uh, using TBA, you, you know that the, well, actually the anomalous dimension Will be given as the sum of all the massive particles of uh, such an integral. Okay, and this is the, the bare dimension of the, of the operator. Sorry, well, well, what is infinite? Uh, you said something is infinite. Yes, so, so here, uh, it's, this, is on, this is, as you were saying actually earlier, uh, this is infinite, right? This graph is not, uh, I mean, it doesn't convert if you try to. It's, uh, yeah, but it's you infinite. said the infinite size of the system. Uh, uh, ah, yeah, but <laughs> yes, you have. It's like you have uh, the in the mirror picture. You have that's why you have you get an infinite right because you have sent the the size of the. So, so J would be the um, the inverse temperature in the in the mirror system, and the but the size uh, you sent it to to infinity. You mean number of scalars? Uh, no, no, I mean uh, you integrate over uh, from zero to infinity. Ah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you mean infrared cutoff? Yes. Mm, okay, so the, 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 what are the y functions for this TBA? So you have one uh, y function for each uh, type of particles. So these are these y uh, one l's. So there is one of them for each uh, positive integer. If you want to start this blue dot, yeah. And um, for l larger than one, you also have the OD uh, degrees of freedom. So to each l larger than one, you associate uh, the, well, uh, well, the a Dinkin diagram of uh, nodes for uh, y functions. Um, so here, for instance, if d is even, um, that you associate. But sorry, um, for me there is probably uh, I missed something, but there is some logical jump, right? So normally uh, when you derive TBA, you have okay a lo long uh, spin chain, right? And then you find some typical state of the spin chain, and then extremize uh, free energy. Yes. Right. So in your case, the length seems to be any length, right? So you sum over all of them. No, so no, no, because we, it's a, it's, we sum over the number of particles. N is, is really the number of, part, the length is always the, the same, but N is the number of particles. 
No, I but lens, some... lens for in your picture, lens was a number of wheels, right? Or not? No, 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 no. Length is never uh, the number of wheels is is n is the number of particles. Mm -hmm. Okay, who so, is length? So you, have, so you have one particle state, two particle states. Uh, three particle who is length? Okay, length, uh, I I did not uh, give it. It's, you would have to... There's nothing that I can call length. Here it's infinity length. If you want. Um, it's not... No, but what what is it? It's like uh, you have this um, space-time dimension, right? You have a cylinder. I mean, you go to see, to see, like make it conformal translation to cylinders, and you have spherical harmonics. This is like uh, isotropic degrees of freedom, and radius is your length, or what? Yes, 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 yes. Radius is the is the length. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's like really physical coordinate. Then. Yes, yes. That's what I was. The the, the mirror uh, position is the radius in the. Rd. Uh, okay, so the, the equations for the moment, I will not show all of the equations, but the equations for the momentum carrying nodes uh, looks like, look like this. So, you okay, have so for, for your right. pictures, immediately for your pictures. Uh, first of all, uh, is uh, I mean, this looks like the even picture, right? Yes, 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 yes. This is only for the, I wanted to give a picture, but I have to choose. So this is for the even. No, but you chose easy one. I mean, what about the odd? Ah, uh, we didn't, uh, did it, I mean, in the paper, and actually, yes, we only did it for the even. But uh, so you do not know what is the odd then? No, we don't. Know. Okay, but then also D equal to four, right, in, in reality? Yeah. Uh, so when d equal to four, this picture becomes much much smaller. Yes, yes. Uh, you don't have this uh, this uh, node. Oh, can you can you just comment two. only two? Uh, but then it, together with this blue node, it's three nodes. Then or yes, what? exactly. You have like a blue node and two nodes. I mean, one say one above and below. Uh, um, so I I just look at your formulas now. So a is equal from two to one plus d over two, and d is equal to four. It's uh, yeah, so two, two and three. Okay, so okay. then you have like a SO six then uh, that diagram, diagram, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the the. The TB equations for the massive nodes, they look like this. You have the, the, the driving term, that's the, the energy of uh, well, the particle of type L. Uh, you have a constant C that uh, involves the chemical potential, log size square. And also a uh, part of the, the, um, the phase of the S matrix, F. And the other part of the phase is one of the kernels of this TBA, and it's an interaction between uh, massive nodes. Then uh, this kernel is a uh, more usual uh, kernel. Mm. <coughs> okay. So now uh, I would like to mention that uh, there is actually a dual form of this TBA, and this was first noticed by um, uh, by uh, Benjamin Basso and Zhang. Uh, I should have written so by Shou and Zhang in four dimension. But actually, this duality holds in, uh, in any dimension uh, with any uh, isotropy parameter. And um, I guess it relies on, partly on this observation that the, the kernel we have here that comes from the R phase of the S matrix is actually related to the kernel of the OD plus two um, uh, sigma model S matrix from, from this paper. Uh, see, it satisfies some simple equation. Oh, star is the convolution. Sorry, in here, I missed something there. Do you have finitely many y functions? No, 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 there are infinitely many. Uh, L uh, can be uh, any integer. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so once you have noticed this, you can act 
on the equation for the first massive node with this operator. And then uh, it allows you to rewrite it uh, without the kernels coming from the, the scalar, the, the phase of this matrix. You only have a kernel from, from this uh, function and uh, the, the usual kernel. Mm. Oh, of course, the driving term has changed now. You don't have a epsilon zero. You have a new driving term that I will, I will show in the next slide. Um, Okay. First, uh, it, you can also modify the, I mean, rewrite the, the equations for the other uh, massive nodes so that the, all the kernels coming from the scalar phase, they, they, they disappear. And, uh, but at the same time, you, in the remaining massive nodes, you remove completely the, the driving term. You can absorb them. Okay. So in the, in the end, uh, what we get are the TBA equations for the OD plus two sigma model except that the elastivistic uh, dispersion relation is replaced by, um, by a dual uh, dispersion relation to our, system, to our model. So the energy uh, looks like this. Then you, you would define the momentum as the analog of a, of a double weak rotation. Uh, okay, so it's, it's a definition. And you also have to perform a shift of the, I mean, uh, um, you have to also swap uh, the roles of delta and delta tilde because, uh, I mean, intuitively, it's because if you perform a weak rotation of your uh, square lattice, because uh, vertical propagators have weight delta and horizontal ones have weight delta tilde, uh, when, once you've shifted, you also have to switch uh, the weights to get back to the original lattice. But in the end, um, okay, and in the end, what you get is a gapless uh, dual dispersion relation that looks like this. So it would be the red uh, curve on this drawing. Well, the blue one is the relativistic, uh, just a parabola, it's the relativistic uh, dispersion relation. Yeah. And, and finally, so yes, once you have done this, uh, it, it looks like the, the coupling constant has completely disappeared from the equations because it was in the driving terms and uh, well, you, you make them disappear. But actually, um, it's because we lost information on the way, and uh, part of this information is recovered once you look at the, the energy of the state, the states right, in the dual picture. So since now there is only one uh, massive node, uh, you, have, you don't have a sum, you have only one term, of the dual momentum, P. And actually, uh, this dual energy, I mean, yeah, is I mean, energy uh, in the dual picture is um, is directly related to log of to the chemical potential to log of psi square. What also appears is a, a critical coupling psi square critical, um, and uh, it, it turns out that uh, well we can check yeah, we checked that uh, the value of a log psi square critical it's exactly the free energy density of the large large uh, of dense uh, so yes, of dense fishnet graphs coming from, I mean, this was computed by Zamolochikov many years ago. Sorry, uh, for the sum. So energy, uh, is it a sum of individual particles energies and in, just in thermodynamic limits divided by length? So, yes, that, yeah. so why, why is it, uh, how come it is log of psi square from the initial picture? So it's a it's a energy in the dual picture. So it's not the same. Uh, it's. I mean, uh, why, why not? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's, uh, it's So which way are you cutting your graph now? Uh, just, uh, so now I'm just I'm. Are you opening still uh, along uh, from zero to infinity? No, no, no. I'm not look. Um, I'm not looking at the graphs anymore. I have the. I have the TBA equations for the scaling dimension, which mm -hmm. are the original uh, like uh, this. And now I forget about the graph. I just uh, play with these equations. And basically, I, like, I rewrite them in a different way. And, uh, so I write them. Differently, so I have a, a different system and uh, with a different energy E 
on D4, a different momentum P, and a different uh, energy. Just uh, what is the intuition uh, behind the formula? Why energy is log of, of the coupling? Uh, I don't know what the intuition is. No, I, I can't say. Is it what comes from this partition function you wrote? Because Xi was playing the role of. Uh... So uh, you mean why does. Oh, okay, so yes, uh, log Xi appears. Oh, okay, so log Xi. Sorry, it was in C. Oh, yes. Yes, uh, so log psi square was in C already from, from, from the star. It's because, yes, we have psi square to the some power, so it's like exponential log psi square times the number of particles times the inverse temperature. So, yes, it's because log psi square is the chemical potential of this system. Okay, and finally, uh, you, you, it can be shown also that the Y system uh, is exactly that of the OD plus two sigma model. So it looks like, so this is what's uh, derived uh, in that paper. And uh, well, uh, I'm not showing the equations, but it looks like this. You have uh, one massive node that interacts with, uh, so now for D even, once again, uh, you, you have the OD, uh, OD plus two uh, Dinkin diagram. And uh, the only massive node interacts with the first uh, Dicken diagram. And then, um, okay, you have infinitely many uh, of copies of this uh, pattern. Okay, so are there questions? Because before I move on to the last part. So what, what about the analytic structure of this Y function as compared to those of uh, Bolog and Hagedish? Yeah, I don't know. We, we I mean, uh, we haven't really investigated uh, that. Uh, but very but yeah, your TBA equations are also the same, not only the diagram for Y. So. Well, except for the, Some for the diagram. Term. Yeah. yeah. So there's particular point in uh, the model of spaces. The ATB. So it's a particular choice of chemical potential. So can you map it exactly to the ATB or it is? Uh, no, I don't think. Uh, no, no, I'm, I don't think we can. I mean, you have the same diagram for any states in the in the OT plus two theory. Same for the ground state, same for excited states. What is different is the analytic structure. Okay. Which is encoded in the driving terms. And maybe in the asymptotics. I mean, driving terms are killed already in this simplified form of the TBA. In the Y system, they disappear. Yes, so uh, in the Y system, they disappear. And yes, uh, the asymptotics uh, is. No, okay, no, I have nothing <laughs> to say. Okay. okay, sorry. So now I would like to change a, a little bit. I mean, it's. Uh, so, sorry, Gwena, just uh, yep. should we have a break, maybe? Ah, yes, perhaps it's a good point, yes. Yeah. Okay, then uh, maybe let's have a uh, 10 minutes break for coffee and we restart at uh, three past what will be four in the UK. Oh. Yeah, let's continue. Okay, okay, I can continue. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so now I would like to present the, the, the non-compact spin chains that are involved. I mean, that, uh, that underlie the integrability of this theory. So uh, you have to consider an infinite dimensional representation of the conformal group. So, so this in induced representation, they, uh, they are characterized by a representation of the rotation group in D dimension and uh, the complex number. But I will only focus on scalar representation 
of the rotation group, so it's like scalar and principle series. And but this still depends on the complex number of delta. But can, okay, and they are defined on functions on Rd. So you, okay, you can have a rotations that just act on the argument because the f is a scalar. Uh, translations, dilations, and also uh, like inversion. You can perform inversion. It's part of your conformal groups. And that's how it acts on the function. And gener generically, these representations, they are non-unitary but ir and irreducible. So there is no uh, closed invariant. Uh, but there are some important unitary cases. So if uh, the number delta, like the Formal dimension takes specific values uh, and build an uh, invariant uh, inner, uh, bilinear inner product. So, first case is uh, when real part of delta is d over 2. Then uh, the, the space is just you take L2 as the space of functions and you have a unitary principal series. Then the second case is the one that appeared before is when the delta is real between 0 and d. And then you are in the complementary series. Uh, can, you, scalar yes. can you comment on Hermitian conjugation properties of rotation, translation, dilatations? So L, what is L is anti-Hermitian to itself? Or uh, what about P? Is P self-conjugated, conjugated to to special conformal? So, uh, but standard representation action on uh, so L is differential just, uh, operators. Uh, Yes. Uh, yes, yes. L is just uh, x mu d mu minus x mu oh. d mu, and p is just uh, minus d. Okay, with respect to given scalar product, right? Uh, so, okay, okay. For, okay, so for the first one, okay, I'm fine. For the first one, uh, dagger of derivative is uh, minus derivative, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what about second scalar product? Okay, here. Uh, How dagger of, of operators? Yes, yes. Sex, uh, uh, well, I. I can't say right now. I would have to think it. But, uh, um, okay, no, I don't. I don't know right now. No, I'm. 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 I suspect that uh, with respect to second, it's uh, p dagger should be k. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So this is basically the question. So with respect to first one, p dagger looks like p or minus p, but second is probably k. Okay. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Ah. Mm. Ah. Mm. Uh, okay, now that we have a representation, we can look for me. People looked for R matrices that act on tensor product of these of two of these representations. One and characterized by delta one, the other characterized by delta two. Uh, no, but then I have immediate question. If you take down the product of two representations and their scalar product is different differently, I'm confused. Uh, so, sorry. Uh, um, maybe I'm not, con well, uh, I have worried that they have different structure. This is my worry, okay? Mm. Maybe I'm wrong, so that's why I'm asking. Right. Uh, so, but they, could, they don't even have to be uh, unitary, right? This representation. And you can still look for an R matrix. No? Oh, okay. And so, yeah. Okay. Well, actually, you can take tensor product of whatever you want. Yes. Uh, and, and it will be decomposed again or su such type of representation. Only one comment that also you showed in, introduced discrete representation as well. So there are principles, yes, yes, yes. complementary and discrete. And then you can multiply ten, tensorly any two and decompose over these uh, representations again. Okay, yes, yes, yes. I did not uh, mention the discrete representations, but uh, yeah, there are more. Yeah, sorry. Uh, okay, but the, the R matrix, that is a solution of the young baxter equation, uh, it's of this form, so it was found in the, this paper. And uh, so its kernel is just a square, uh, it it acts on uh, diagonally, right? If, uh, the, if, you, if the first state uh, enters here, then it exits here. The first space, sorry, and then the second space, like this. 
and uh, it depends, of course, on our matrix on the spectral parameter u and on the two dimensions, delta one and delta two. Okay, so perhaps I can show a graphical proof of the young Baxter. Um, so, okay, so this is the young Baxter equation. And here, uh, for instance, if you look at the left hand side, this would be the kernel of the left hand side. So, the first operator that acts is R23. So, if you have the kernel of uh, R23 here, then you have the kernel of R13, and then the kernel of R12. And uh, so, okay, I would have to be more careful and write all the weights of, of the exponents of each of these propagators. And then I realized that I can use star triangle here to replace this triangle with a star integration. First step. And then the second step is to perform these three uh, integrations, the, yeah, the three star, once again, using star triangle. And you would get this uh, kernel. Looks like an hexagon with the center integrated over. And performing similar manipulation on the right hand side, you arrive at the same uh, kernel. So, of course, we have to take care, mm -hmm. you have to be careful about the proportionality constants, but uh, they, they, they match. And in the end, um, okay, so that you said you verify your young Baxter equation. Okay, so now that you have uh, an R matrix, you can build a, well, the transfer matrix. If you, uh, you multiply different R matrices that have, the whole of uh, like the one space in common, the auxiliary space, and then you trace, it's infinite dimensional, but you trace over this uh, auxiliary space. So the, the, the kernel, it looks like this, right? You have a, a circle of uh, squares that are uh, joined. Mm -hmm. So this is a generic uh, uh, transform, the kernel of a generic transform matrix. But then if you take particular values of the conformal dimension, if you choose a particular representation in the physical space and in the auxiliary space, uh, namely you take all the, the, the physical space at each side of the spin chain to be the same, characterized by a small delta tilde, and then the auxiliary space to be characterized by a delta, small delta, you can, it was observed that, um, yes, uh, it was first observed, this was in dimension four, but it was observed that then if you uh, send the spectral parameter with a specific value, you recover uh, a graph building, so it's not the same as before, but it's still a graph building operator relevant for the Fischner theory. You see this one is, uh, uh, it adds circles. Each time you add, with, you act with this one. You, you keep the number of spokes uh, of weight, uh, radius uh, fixed, but you add uh, more and more uh, circles. So this is just a well, transform matrix. Okay, for gamma hat n that we we, we used uh, earlier, it's a, a bit more complicated. So yeah, the interpretation is perhaps less clear, but in dimension two, uh, it has been clearly uh, explained. So, in in this paper, the two authors, the diagonal, so first of all, uh, in two dimensions, the conformal group is basically SL two C. So uh, you also have a fundamental modular matrix for which you know the auxiliary space is the fundamental, the space of the fundamental defining representation. So it's just a two by two uh, matrix. The monodromy matrix with each B, C, and D being a, an operator acting on the physical dimensional uh, space, the actual infinite dimensional space. And uh, yeah, in this paper, they, they diagonalized uh, each A, B, C, and D uh, independently I and mean, separately. And uh, in particular, they showed that there exists, for instance, for A, an operator QA that. Um, Okay, it depends on u and an integer. Uh, it's a, it forms a commuting family of operators. It commutes with A also, and it satisfies some uh, finite difference in the equation. But it turns out that uh, this operator Q, if you look at it at the specific value of the spectral parameters, you recover uh, once again uh, gamma hat, I mean, our graph building operator. 
Okay. Yes, and in a higher dimension, it's it's less clear how to general um what the analog of Q would be. So you can generalize it if uh, you take just a U but no spin. Then uh, you, you write the same kernel as in two dimension. It's a straightforward generalization. And here, once again, if U takes a specific value, you recover um, gamma gamma n gamma. N. Um, Okay, and now uh, we want to diagonalize it. Then well, we just have to uh, continue what we did for gamma one, gamma two already. So uh, it's a bit uh, tedious, but um, sorry, but there's two I operators they come uh -huh. mute with each other. Which operators? Sorry, this this two? Yeah, or not already? Yeah, it's actually this one. Uh, it, it's a family, it's a committing family. So each u, I mean u, v, you take u, you take v, and the two operators they commit. So you already know the eigenvector? Uh, no, no, because I, I mean, I only showed you the eigenvectors for lengths one and lengths two. Right? I mean, for uh, lengths uh, bigger, you don't know. Yeah, because I think I have a related question. But this, when you do this higher dimension generalization on Q, does it satisfy the same constraints as in the Lebetchow paper? Or? Oh, there is, so you have ah, yes. so more. You, yeah, so you have this constraint, this is, commutes with okay. itself, but uh, I have no A, so uh, I, I don't know. I don't have. Okay, because in principle, what do you say for this? Yeah, in the next slide, uh, I want to, uh, but for, you need to know the Q structure to do reproduce your head, uh, your gamma head, right? Well, uh, I can start from this kernel and just send u to i delta over two. No, I mean, I can define this operator, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. I will get exactly, uh, this is gamma hat, sorry. This is gamma Yeah, hat. okay, okay, but and this is a specific is reduction, okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, and this is fine. This q, q of u, it commutes with itself at different values with respect to parameter. So that's all yes. we have. Okay, and then this, you can actually construct uh, the eigenvectors for any any n any, any length of the open uh, spin chain. So it's an iterative uh, procedure. So we only show, for instance, what are eigenvectors for three in, for length three. Uh, so they depend on the okay, so three complex rapidities, no three real three rapidities. So you one, you two, you three, three integers, and one, two, or three, and still a, a tensor structure that lives in the tensor product of. Uh, a symmetric trace space of length L1 times symmetric trace space of length N2 times symmetric trace space of length L3. Okay, so and why do I say it's iterative? It's because um, I take so this block here would be the eigenvector for length two. And then I act on it with uh, everything that's here. And that only depends on one of the, um, well, on one type of like only on U1 and L1, and U1, only one type of parameters. So actually, it was the same before uh, Psi2. It was constructed from, uh, from Psi1 by acting on it with uh, something that depended only on one set of uh, parameters, like U2 and L2, for instance. Okay. Okay, so now you have a bunch of uh, integrations that are still uh, still there, cannot perform. And, um, and you have to act with derivatives, and at the end, you have to put all the, these, these points here to, to the same thing. Sorry, essentially your input is just Psi1. So this U1, L1 depends on this, you means that you know the operatorial action on each uh, the transition. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear the question. I mean, so each input to, for the reconstruction of the of the of the eigenvectors and the psi. So your initial input just uh, is psi one. Yes. Or you need yes. To, okay, and uh, assuming that you know the operatorial actions along the along the sides. Yeah, it's written explicitly, so there is no no input output. You just compute this integral. Yes, exactly. So I just yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's. Just, I want to say, if you want to write psi four, for instance, we just have to. So this is psi three. 
But if you want to write size four, you would have to add another uh, like column here. But it would be something different. Yes. Yeah, but I'm just saying since uh, you, you said that this is a iterative structure. If you start with a, something that depends on your one L1, then it means the, the next uh, function is just contracted purely from that by assuming what is, uh, what the uh, code is saying from the integral. I think probably confusion is because not everyone understands this notation with dot and lines. Maybe you, you can explain this notation. But not okay, so so this, uh, sorry, yes, so this drawing is a function of x1, x2, x3. So this is exactly the eigenvector. It's a function of x1, x2, x3. And it's just that all these lines are propagators. So all these black dots are integration points. So to each black dot, you associate a position. Like an but integration. Propagators in a power in some power, which is this uh, index. Sorry? It's not the standard scalar propagator, right? It's uh, one over x to the power. Yes. It's, uh, the line. Okay. okay, yes. It's, uh, okay, so let's say this is x uh, a, for instance. This uh, black line would be one over x3 minus x a square to this power, beta tilde one minus l one over two. Oh, okay, sorry. To, uh -huh. yeah. Then I have to. Okay. Okay. And then because I have to do the same thing for. Sorry. Yeah. You 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 are computing an integral at each node, but I was just wondering what's iterative in this picture. Is that... Ah yes. Okay. So iterative just because uh, once you know psi two say. You can act on it with some kernel that would be this to get psi three. So, but it's not really psi because your x naught and x naught uh, prime are open, right? At this point, exactly. <clears throat> uh, yes, okay. yes, okay, yeah, okay. So, uh, but then you all send, yes. to, but uh, but then you all of them send to zero, so it is. Uh, the same thing, so it doesn't really matter. It's well, after yes, no, but you're right that because of the order, it's not directly side two on which I act, uh, and I want to get the uh, side three. But, uh, okay. But when you send, send this x to zero, is there uh, any divergence when you send this or, or not? Uh, no, 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 it's, it's, no, no okay. Then, then probably you just. Uh, yeah. Can you well, you just have to differentiate. That's the only possible. Otherwise, they, yeah. you can set them to zero straight from the beginning. Oh, yeah, but that's the point. You have to differentiate first. So. But do you need? And to also, they don't have. They don't have to. They, need, they shouldn't uh, coincide. Otherwise, uh, of course, when you take the derivatives. Uh, actually, do you need to sum them to zero if they fix they keep to be finite? Is it still hiding function? Yes. Oh, yes. So you have. It depends on how I define. Uh, actually, you have to send them to the point <laughs> x naught. Okay. So gamma hat it depends on x naught. That doesn't, that doesn't have to be zero. I chose it to be zero for convenience, but it could be. It could be a parameter actually. It could be fixed, arbitrary point, and then uh, you would have to send them to this uh, to this point. So you send it uh, in order to get uh, an eigenfunction of dilatation operator as well. Otherwise, it's a it diagonalized a graph building, but it just doesn't uh, doesn't compute with uh, generators of conformable. So, I mean, doesn't diagonalize them. It's correct. So you can keep them open it's, it's until you still eigenvector, right? Uh, uh, no, no, no. You have you have to send them to the same to the same point. It's important. Well, because you have as many uh, derivatives for it to be eigenvector. So essentially, it is open. Anyway, so so uh, probably you wanted to make some point that the, we kind of uh, diverted too much from the into the technical detail. So, what was the point you wanted to make? Well, it depends. I just wanted to <laughs> to show uh, the, the form of the, the eigenvectors, but I think it, no, no, it's important. I I want to I think that uh, the the points have to be the same. After you take derivatives, you send the points to the same. All all of them have to coincide. Otherwise, it's not an eigenvector of uh, of the operator. 
Okay, and uh, and a possible application I like an um, ideal application. So eigenvectors would be computations of some uh, some finite integrals at uh, of this form. So you would imagine. So roughly, this is a four-point function, a conformal four-point function in which we have sent the fourth point to infinity and sent one of the point uh, to zero. So now you can have uh, any number of uh, vertical lines here yeah, and M and any number of horizontal lines. And at this graph, you see that you can build it by repeated action of uh, gamma hat uh, N. I act with gamma hat N uh, M plus one times, and I have uh, these graphs up to perhaps two propagators. And okay, these points are separated, and I, but almost. <laughs> so if you can diagonalize uh, this graph building operator, you should be able to compute uh, these graphs. And actually, it was done in four and two dimensions. So in four dimensions, first uh, a formula was uh, uh, found. In, the, in this paper, but the, uh, the proof of this formula using uh, exactly this technique of graph building operators and uh, diagonalizing them was done by uh, Darkachev uh, and Gay and Enrico um, well, recently. And in two dimension, it was uh, because the diagonalizing of the operator was already known, uh, the, the results could be computed earlier by Volodya, Sergei, and Enrico. Uh, Okay, but so far, um, it looks like the formulas in dimensions different than two or four are uh, as the determinant representation they were able to obtain uh, in this particular um, cases. Well, I don't want to show anything more on that. So that the, it, sorry, what's the same? Is it still a determinant mm -hmm. or not? In, I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't know. It does the point. Uh, for the one, it's too complicated for me to to say it's uh, if it's a determinant or not. But the way you derive it in two and four, you don't see initially that it's a determinant. You just uh, at the end. Uh, yes. Yes. But uh, if they still have. The... Yeah, but they still have uh, some nice expression like this sums. I mean. Uh, okay. If, even before looking at if it is a determinant or not. Uh, the expression for these integrals are like uh, sums of integers and integration over the rapidities. And uh, with just a measure and, uh, and the weight and the eigenvalue to some power. And uh, it turns out that, uh, in, I think, it looks like at least in order that there is not just one measure. It's not as simple. You would necessarily have uh, another sum, uh, some other nested sums inside. So. The structure appears to be more complicated, and I cannot say much more. So, uh, like understand about uh, the scalar product of these eigenvalue functions. So, uh, you uh, just starting from n equals one, you have some tensor structure which is contracted with uh, the spin part of the eigenfunctions, uh, and then you have similar thing for more. Le for higher length, but uh, I guess you should specify something about so these tensor C. I mean, you, you should have something which uh, gives you kind of an orthogonal basis where at least you can guess completeness if, in order to diagonal operator and, and provide the representation for Basso-Dixon operator, for example, so. Okay, okay, so. Uh... You're right. If I want some complete basis, I symmetric trace uh, representation of uh, OD. And okay, they are finite dimensional, so you can choose any uh, any any basis of these spaces. And then uh, once you have a more, I mean, higher length, well, you just take uh, tensor products of these bases. So, so you have n sides, you have tensor products of n, n, n bases, and uh, you have a basis for the tensor structure, um, but it doesn't really, um, the, in the end, when you want to compute these integrals, it doesn't really matter uh, what basis you, you, you take. I mean, as soon as you have, uh, say, a given complete basis, I mean, for the tensor structure, of course, for the, the dependence on U, and uh, it's important, 
but uh, for C, for the do tensor C, uh, it's not very relevant. Uh, yes, sir. sure, but uh, I'm no, I'm wondering. Uh, so your eigenfunctions, I mean, eigenfunctions for this kind of problem are not tensor product of one side eigenfunctions, right? Yes, yes, okay. So you should uh, have, uh, you should compute scalar products to get the measure and to get uh, at least guessing that thing looks like a complete basis. Right? Otherwise, you cannot insert uh, the identity. Yes, so, okay, so the, the scalar product that, that is, uh, is hard to compute, but what you expect is that uh, the, the tensor structure, they will contract between them, right? You take two eigenvectors, they, well, they have two dependence, L dependence, but they have like the tensor C and C, C prime, say, and uh, the, the scalar product, it will involve C contracted with C prime, and then also all the, all the permutations you can do in setting the S matrix, right? So you have the sum over all uh, C times S times C prime, with uh, I mean S and C. Okay. All right. So yeah, and then I, yeah. I, I was done. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I can I can conclude uh, very briefly. So we formulated this the TBA or the Fischer theory in any dimension d and arbitrary dimension and anisotropy. Sorry. Uh, so in order to do that, we had to obtain the mirror scattering data and we had to diagonalize some suitable graph feeding operators. Uh, these operators they have uh, some interpretation via non-compact uh, conformal spin chains. And yes, and the uh, Kader diagonalization, which we can do, uh, should be a first step towards rational variables and also computation of some Feynman, class of Feynman diagrams. Okay, I'm finished. I'm there. Okay, thank you very much, Gwena. Uh, let, let's thank the speaker, and then we can take more questions. Okay. Are there any more questions? I would I would ask about our matrix, if possible. Yes, yes. What, what? Okay. Yeah, um, could you explain again how our matrix comes out from uh, the eigenfunction somehow? So you look at the asymptotic behavior of the of the eigenvector, and uh, okay. So sorry. Yes. So you have uh, say the two uh, two magnum. I mean two particle eigenvec uh, eigenvectors. If you look at their uh, asymptotics, it's a sum of two terms. And uh, th the only difference between the two terms is that you have swapped uh, the, the momenta and you have acted on the tensor structure with the R matrix. And if you have uh, more than two particles, say n, uh, you would have a sum of uh, factorial n terms, right? And uh, each time, so. For each permutation of the particles, you would have the like, permutation of the momenta, and then uh, the associated uh, I mean, S matrix, right? the product of uh, permutation. Okay. Okay. So basically, you okay, okay. So for each layer, you would have two indices, and when you take the asymptotics uh, for n layers, uh, I mean n points, sorry, n, n, point, n points. You okay? You have a kind of uh, L one and L two. So you have a kind of uh, yeah. Okay, you have product of many R matrices, but yes, yeah. it's uh, not okay. Yeah. I think it's the same in a. So in four dimension, you have this formula when you permute uh, two of the separated uh, variables, right? And uh, it's like the same. You have an action of on the with product of R matrices, no? Yes, exactly. So here it's exactly the same thing because you see if you permute uh, U1L1 with U2L2, uh, Rafi is the same as uh, acting on C with uh, S. 
either you do one or the other, you get the same result. Oh, S minus one. Oh, sorry. Mm. S minus. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, okay. But uh, still, this is, yeah, of course, the, the difference is that uh, your R matrix is on tensor level. While since we realize tensors explicitly using spinners, yes, it's on spinner level, but yeah, uh, yeah, that's one. they are two on the left and on the right, and so yes, let's say that uh, pro probably is is really directly related in this way. Yeah. All right, so let's uh, thank the speaker again. So oh, next week, next week is very unusual week. It's a week when we have holidays. No journal club. I know it's very disappointing for most of you, but we have to have break in our life, do something else, stay home, save lives. So, and the week after we'll have Joao um, speaking about probably his work with uh, Shota. Mm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I stop <laughs> Sorry, do you want to say something while I get that? Uh, on my computer. <laughs> Not to uh, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> So I hope you enjoyed it. Bye. 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 Bye.